Hello, I'm calling in for Dustin. Yeah, this is Dustin. Is this Mr. Bauer? Yes, sir. I, I thought I couldn't get a hold of you. My iPhone kept saying you can't call 800 numbers, but I figured out a way to get it done. All right. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm doing good, brother. What's going on? I'm not too much. I'm here with my co-host, Ton. Hey, man. How you doing? Ton? How you doing? Ton. T-O-N, like, like 2,000 pounds. Like, I'm really fat. Oh, you're, yeah, 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 yeah. You're a ton. Okay. I'm, I'm a ton, I'm ton of love is what I am, really. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we got a couple questions, if uh, you're cool with that. Uh, sounds great, man. No problem. I guess we can start at the uh, typical starting place and ask you how you kind of got started in the acting business. Uh, yeah, well, it's pretty – I think it's an interesting story. When I was a young kid, like – uh, I was in like third grade, fourth grade. I, my father worked all the time and I had to walk home and wait for him to get home from work. And I kind of like got abused because I was always the big kid or the funny kid or the nerd, whatever you might call it. And, um, I just, I couldn't get home. Okay. Wow. Great. I love motorcycles. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't get home, you know, in time. So I stayed in school and they had a glee club. And long story short, I fell in love with entertaining and watching them perform. So I waited a couple of years until I was in the fifth grade to sign up for a glee club, and the rest is history. Awesome. Yeah, wow. So then is it true, uh, like, w one of your first roles or something was in Michael Jackson's Moonwalker? Is that all true? Yeah, yeah. You know, once I, you know, went into glee club, we, we performed a play that became real popular and it was based on current events at the time, and our play was kind of like we are the world, we are the children about kids, you know, um, getting canned goods for the homeless, not the homeless, but like the, you know, the needy people in Africa. Yeah. And um, our play got real popular, and next thing you know, you know, we had Quincy Jones and people like that kind of coming to watch our performance, and then I got an agent through the Glee Club and through that play, and... Michael Jackson was doing Moonwalker around that time, and they casted me. Wow. Isn't that yeah, just ridiculous? That's, that's just like your first job. You're hanging out with Quincy Jones and MJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, looking back on it now, it's a it's pretty in, intense way to start a career. So I, I, I know I'm destined for big things when, when you get started by amazing talents like them. Yeah, that's, that's pretty incredible. So then from there, are you just, uh, you're like making appearances and stuff on uh, kind of sitcoms and stuff like that? I know you were in a couple episodes of The Wonder Years and a few other shows like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, when you're a young actor, you get, you know, you get auditions and you just go in there and read a script and hope they like you and the director or producer want to hire you. And, you know, you definitely go out for the sitcoms and, you know, the, the small parts and the small movies and you just try to build your resume so yeah, I definitely, I definitely did a, a lot of those, you know, as the, the fat friend or the, <laughs> the sidekick, the buddy. Yeah, I remember you were, I think it was a Glee Club or maybe a choir or something in the Wonder Years. I remember those episodes. Uh, yeah, I was never in a choir or a Glee Club in Wonder Years. I actually, I did like three or four episodes where I'm a different character in each one. One of them was like an obituary episode where I, I read an obituary in front of the teacher. And okay. then another one with a breakup episode where Kevin breaks up with Winnie Cooper and I make him feel bad about it. Then there's the, <laughs> the, the producers loved me so much, they, they wrote an entire episode about me. And then it was like a fat episode where they make fun of, you know, like bigger kids in a yearbook. And Kevin <laughs> decides to basically put me on blast in the yearbook. And then he, you know, his conscience gets to him and tells him, you know what, maybe I should change it all while befriending me and becoming a good friend and realizing I'm an amazing person even though I have, you know, different features. <laughs> that was that was the one with the gumball machine, wasn't it? Yeah, no, actually, uh, that was not me. That was another fat actor. That was where he had, yeah, he had like that horror was... stories or something or dreams or nightmares. Oh, no, that okay. wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You, you, have to, you, have to, you have to go and, you know try to find one to years on the net and look up my episodes. Do you kind of feel like you were typecasted maybe as a young actor? Or? Well, I mean, you don't know what typecasting is until you're an adult. Yeah. So, I mean, when I'm young, it's like, hey, here, eat a candy bar and be funny. Thank you. <laughs> Nowadays, like, yeah. Um, looking back on it now, I mean, 
I broke into the business, so whether I was typecast or not, who cares? I mean, yeah, you got you got to get in the business any way you can, and whatever door opens up, you know, walk through it. I mean, it's different for women, you know. That's sexuality, and those are other issues. But for me, you know, it's just fat and funny. It works. <laughs> Embrace it, right? Yeah, definitely. Just, you know, be who you are. I'm a character. <clears throat> Might as well be one. That's what Tan and I try to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you guys like? Like like best buds? <laughs> yeah, Everybody, well, yep, we're best buds. It's similar to that yearbook episode, you know, where a lot of people made fun of me and then Ton felt bad and he was pressured to put in the, the fat kid nickname, but then he didn't at the last minute and now we're kind of inseparable radio hosts. That's right. Okay, so the question is who is the bitch? <laughs> Dusty. I'll Dusty's, take it. Dusty's. I'll take it. <laughs> cool. You're taking one for the team. I got you. I got it. It's all right. I, I, I've been the bitch for many years, and you know what? Sometimes bitches get all the money. <laughs> yeah, see, there you yeah, go. Yeah, see. So uh, the film The Willies, what's, uh, what is that? <laughs> what is that all about? Oh, man, we don't talk about that over here, see, in Hollywood. That was a good movie. I yeah, thought. you know, they owe me money. I never got paid for that sucker. Really? Can you believe it? You know, that's, that's called deferred payment in Hollywood. But, uh, nah, you know, it was a young, like, horror film. The director actually started filming it many years earlier, like on the weekends, with whatever money he had. Wow. And, um, yeah, so it's an amazing horror movie, to, to, to say the least, for the 90s. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and they didn't pay you for it? What a rip. Look at that. I'm getting calls, you know, from people that give me the willies while we're talking about it. Oh. <laughs> Yikes. Well, yeah, no, I think everybody should go watch it. It's it's in the vein of Creep Show, man. It's it's a really classic comedy. Well yeah, it's you like were comedy you, horror film. You were one of the main guys in that movie. I can't believe they stiffed you. Uh they didn't really skip me. They just um you know, they got Sean Afton in there. I mean, what is oh. that Frodo's brother? Is that what it is? Or you know, yeah, I suppose. Rudy? Ru they got to pay Rudy. Yeah. Yeah, dude, the guy from the Goonies, like, come on, put him on the box, please, trust me. I'm just the character. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, there's a lot of great cameos in that movie. I mean, like, if you're a big fan of TV in the 90s and you watch that movie, you're like, wow, look at all these little cameo and guest spots. So around that time, were you uh, kind of getting – calls from Nickelodeon to be on the Salute Your Shorts, or was that after that? Or? Man, you know what? To be honest with you, uh, we did the Nickelodeon pilot for that show that you all love and, and, and adore, Salute Your Shorts. We did that in 1990, which is two years previous to the actual pilot airing on TV. Okay. Yeah, we did a, it was like an in-house pilot where you film it, and then, you know, you try to sell it, and it's only in-house, you know, you try to sell it to networks. And there was a completely different cast. I mean, you know, like, so me and Danny Cooksey, the, the gentleman that played Budnick, we were in the original pilot, and that was filmed in 1990. So then I did Wonder Years, like, in 91, and then I did, like, uh, you know, the Willies, per se, and a couple other projects in, like, 91, 92, until they finally, at the end of 91, they finally came back to it. And then we had to audition all again, like, wow. completely all over. Wow. Or Salute Your Shorts. So it was a two-step audition process. So not only five auditions the first time, there's like another four or five the second. So I earned my money. Wow, yeah. <laughs> what what was it like on the set? You kind of sound like maybe you don't have the best memories from it, or, or is that the no, case? No, no. I love the show. Believe me, it's one of those things that just, once it's done, it's done, and you can look back on it on certain days and, you know, reminisce, but... When it becomes a cult phenomenon, it's kind of like, okay, people, get over it. I am a person. I am a human being. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, I love it. To be honest with you, I I just got it again recently through, you know, digital form because it's, it's really not available anywhere, and I had to get it off the net. I had to steal it. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> but um, I've been watching it on my projector about four episodes, and I'm laughing <laughs> Like, looking back on it, what a funny show. We're stupid. It was so much fun. 
<laughs> like, I'm actually having a great time. I mean, we, come on over and watch it with me. I'm, I'm, I'm reliving the memories. <laughs> but no, I mean, I have, I have the fondest memories. I mean, like the song says, fondest memories, excuse my language, fondest memories, we hold them in our heart. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. it. It's a great show. It's actually, it was a little too adult for its time. And, um, like, if you watch it now, like, there's a lot of adult jokes in there. Yeah. And it's pretty sarcastic, and the writing was pretty intense and unique for, you know, let, let's say early 90s. I mean, nowadays you got shows like The Office doing it and, and jokes like that, but it wasn't around in the 90s, so we were one of a kind. Yeah, definitely. Do you still keep in contact with anybody from that show? Yeah, that's a question I get from everybody. I mean, it's like a family. I mean, I know everybody. I know where they are. Do I contact them daily? No. But, I mean, I love each and every one. They all got their own lives. They all, you know, move in their own directions, and they all flow like fish in their own spawn. Yeah. We're, we're all great. I mean, everybody's really, really healthy. Everybody's alive. Everybody's doing their own thing. Were you kind of uh, kind of bummed when the show was ended, or how did, what was the deal with that? We didn't know it ended, actually. Uh, I mean, a lot of things happened during the second season in terms of the writers and the directors. And um, they kind of like, there was problem, in-house problems going on while we were filming. And we noticed certain writers were not showing up to work. And then certain directors were leaving two or three days before they finished an episode. And that's all business-wise. And, and we didn't really get it. And then, you know, toward the end of the last couple episodes of season two, you know, we all kind of figured out, Mm, our contracts are up, they're, you know, people are leaving, and they're kind of not coming back, so Nickelodeon doesn't want to pay or pick it up, and that's eventually what ended up happening is, you know, going into the third season after winning, we won a bunch of awards, and the directors were actually high-priced directors. That's one of the reasons they got some unique views and visions on the show, because they went after some unique, very young, talented directors that are real huge in the industry now. And I mean, they were huge then, but they were they were just starting out. But you know, they're expensive. So I guess Nickelodeon just didn't have the funds at the time in the '90s. You know, they gave all that money to Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. So who knows? But yeah, that's how it ended. That sucks because Nickelodeon now kind of sucks. I think. Well, again, I mean, <laughs> it's because you're you're 20 years the latter. No, that could be. that are watching Nickelodeon now, 15 years from now, they're going to go, oh, I love Nickelodeon. Yeah, they don't it's, know. It's one of those things. Yeah, they don't know nothing. These little idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trust me. No, you, you're right. I mean, I grew up with kind of, you can't, uh, what, do that on television. Then I guess I got into Ren and Stimpy and Doug, and since our show was on, Clarissa. Yeah. So I kind of became a fan myself. So did you mingle with any of those other people on those shows, or uh, definitely. I mean, when you're working for a, a network, when we went on events, like they had Nickelodeon Studios in Florida back then at Universal Studios, and we went to do a few events out there, and a lot of shows were being produced out there. Ours was not. But, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely met everybody from, you know, the game shows, the, the stuff, and uh, maybe one of my ex-girlfriends was Clarissa, maybe? Whoa. Whoa. Ho, ho. You know, that, Maybe. A little bit of tad bit for you guys. Nice. That yeah, is you know, nice. she might have she might have been my first or second wifey. That's nice. Not literally wifey, but yeah. Yeah. So, can you, we got you. Can you call her up now and we can do a conference call or Yeah. Uh Melissa will not pick up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's married, she's living in France, I think it is. Oh wow. Her wedding was beautiful her wedding was beautiful. She's doing great. That's great. That's great. She's not acting as much right now since you know she has a, a couple babies, but okay. So there's no hope for Ton in that department. There's no hope for me anymore. You missed the boat. I missed it. Big yeah, time. no. She she lost she lost this creature. Wow. That's too bad, man. This manly creature. She lost him. Yeah, that's <laughs> rough. I feel for you. I'll, I'll live. <laughs>